Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and today I watched Loki Season 2 Episode 4 at 0.2 Fabric Speed and found 14 new hidden details or hidden meanings that will make you fall in love with the show even more. Now just to give you lads an update, my mother is still unwell and I had to take a break from all kinds of work due to that. But I thank you lads from the bottom of my heart for all the heartfelt messages and comments. But as the saying goes, the show must go on, so here I am with the breakdown of Episode 4. And lads, YouTube is all I do for a living, so please take a minute to check out my sponsor today, Opera. Opera One is the latest version of Opera Browser and it's so much more than a web browser. It fully integrates your music and media players like Spotify, your messenger apps like Facebook or WhatsApp, and even includes a free VPN and ad blocker. Plus, it comes with built-in AI to help you with tasks. Sometimes technology can be confusing, so it makes so much sense to have all the services smoothly interact with your browser. One of my favorite features in Opera One is Tab Islands. I tend to open a lot of tabs and it's easy to lose track of them. Tab Islands organizes your tabs in a way that's easy to use and visually clear. In my case, say I'm doing research for a Spider-Man video, it automatically groups all my Wikipedia tabs about different Spider-Man characters. Same goes for having a bunch of YouTube tabs open when I'm referencing other videos. Tab Islands helps me stay organized and improves my productivity. On top of that, Opera's integrated AI called Aria is an amazing tool for everyday tasks. I use it particularly when researching video ideas or whenever I have to read lots of website and article text. Aria helps me summarize paragraphs quickly, find key points, and even translate text from other languages. After trying Opera One, this is definitely my go-to web browser, and I'm inviting you to try it out as well. Check them out in my description below. Let's begin the video. Number one, when He Who Remains commands Miss Minutes to wipe everyone's memory at the TVA, notice what Miss Minutes responds initially. Well, a protocol 42. Is it time? She says, is it time? implying he who remains not only uses Miss Minutes to do all his tasks, but he also shares his plans with her in advance. And that's the reason she asked, is it time? This actually explains why Miss Minutes got so greedy in this episode. She learned how the original He Who Remains thinks, making her think she could take over his place. Number two, Victor Timely described Chicago as the shittyocracy capital of the world when explaining he has trust issues. Now the word shittyocracy is actually not a word and Timely likes to make up words. This alludes to the fact that he's an inventor and makes up words for his inventions for a living. Now I should also mention that He Who Remains invented various terms for the TVA also, like temporal aura. So it's something common in all Kang variants. Number three, in this episode, we see something happening with the timeline branches that we've never seen happen before, except only in season one. Unlike only expanding, the timeline branches are shifting in various directions, not just growing outwards. The last time we saw this was when Miss Minutes illustrated the multiversal war in season one, episode one. So the timeline branches moving in a similar fashion could be foreshadowing another multiversal conflict where the timelines merge and engage in war. Number four, Ouroboros in this episode talks about the meaning behind his own name. When he meets Victor Timely, he says Victor was the inspiration behind his work, and Victor credits Ouroboros' guidebook as a source of inspiration. So which one happened first? Did Victor inspire Obi or did Obi inspire Victor? And that's when Obi says this. It's like a snake eating its own tail. And Ouroboros is an ancient symbol depicting a serpent eating its own tail meaning something that causes its own end, but from that end comes rebirth. Number five, Victor Timely asks Obi to inscribe his handbook. And in return, Obi asks Victor to inscribe his. Would you inscribe my, my handbook? Only if you inscribe mine. Now something very funny happens here as well. Notice Casey didn't have any book on his hand when Victor asked Obi to sign his handbook. But as soon as Obi requested the same from Victor and they began signing each other's books, Casey suddenly appears with a book in his hands. So Casey was next in line to get Victor Timely's signature. But sadly, he got interrupted by Sylvie. Guys, sorry to break up this bromance, but can we fix now and... Sign later? The same thing happened earlier in episode 2 when Casey tried to get Obi's signature but Hunter B15 interrupted. Will you sign mine for me? Of course I will. Happy to do it. Yeah, just next to your picture then Hold on. I'll draw mine. So it seems like my guy Casey is not getting any of their signatures anytime soon. Number six, Obi keeps on going about how little time he had to prepare the model. And despite that, he still made a not to scale sign for this miniature version of the loom. Number seven, 
General Dox, along with their team, was imprisoned for pruning branch timelines. But notice one minor detail about her costume. General Dox chose to have her top button done up, while everyone else left it undone. This aligns perfectly with the character as someone who's very professional, authoritative, and uniformed. Number 8. Sylvie tells Loki that we're playing God, and Loki responds by saying, we are gods. Now, if I take you all the way back to the final episode of Season 1, notice what He Who Remains had told Loki and Sylvie. So you just continue to prune innocent timelines? Mm-mm. You two would. There's two options. One, you kill me and destroy all this, and you don't just have one devil, you have an infinite amount. Or you two. You two run the thing. So He Who Remains wasn't lying at all, because both Loki and Sylvie now find themselves in a position where they would oversee the entire timeline. I mean, we know what eventually happened in this episode, but had Loki and Sylvie succeeded, had Victor Timely succeeded, the entire responsibility of maintaining the proper flow of time would fall upon on Loki and Sylvie, wouldn't it? So even though Loki and Sylvie don't realize it, but they're essentially following a path set by the original He Who Remains. Number 9. When Obi says that someone is corrupting every files in real time, notice we could actually see Miss Minutes removing the files in this tempered screen. I like how the VFX team made sure to CGI even the small little screen that I'm sure nobody paid attention to. Number 10. Just before Miss Minutes got shut down, we know she was glitching. But notice for two frames, Miss Minutes had her hands on her head and her tiny legs legs bend down, as if to say she is in pain and something catastrophic is happening to her. Number 11. So at this point, we all understand how Miss Minutes provoked Victor Timely to take charge and be the hero himself, leading to his eventual demise. Had she not said this, You'll never be him. Victor Timely would never put on the suit and try to be the hero. So Miss Minutes has essentially planted the idea on Victor's head and pushed him to take responsibilities beyond his control. And this tells me that Miss Minutes, although seems to be opposing he who remains, but she might still be in cahoots with him. Because even when getting shut down, she did a favor to the original he who remains by provoking Victor. So I wouldn't be surprised if she comes back and we all find out that her opposing he who remains was all part of a larger plan. Number 12. The scene where Victor Timely meets a gruesome fate by getting spaghettified. I think this could be the beginning of something rather than just the end for Victor Timely. Here's what I mean by that. We have seen that he who remains his aura is depicted as purple. And when Victor Timely gets spaghettified, notice that his purple colored aura scatters across the temporal radiation. So I think what happened here is not only the reset of the entire flow of time, but Victor's aura also seems to spread across all existing timelines. So while trying to save all branch timelines, Loki might have inadvertently unleashed a Kang variant into each timeline. Because remember, Avengers Kang Dynasty is still happening. And for that, we need a thousand different Kangs to team up. Now this is just a theory, so please take it with a grain of salt. Number 13. Now let me point out some very graphic and cruel details from Victor Timely's death scene. When Victor got completely disintegrated by the radiation, the VFX team added his ribcage as well as his jawbone with his teeth. And notice the first thing Victor loses is his left glove, which got exposed to the radiation first, revealing the flesh of his fingers. Now here's a breakdown of the color coordination the VFX team did here. The 10 colored ribbons are from the spacesuit. The red color ribbons represent Victor Timeless flesh, and the bones are depicted as bones as expected. Number 14. Now this one is another theory, not really a visual detail. As I told you already how in this episode, Obi explains the meaning behind his own name, Ouroboros. Now if you think about it, this episode it's Self could have been named Ouroboros instead of Heart of the TVA. Because in this episode, we learn about the Ouroboros effect after the meeting of Victor and OB. And in this episode, Loki realizes that he himself in the future is the one who pruned himself. Everything in this episode seems to form a perfect circle, almost as if it's all part of a plan for someone, someone who shall return. In other words, Loki Season 2 represents the pinnacle of Marvel storytelling. The writing is outstanding, character development is on a grand scale, and most significantly the plot is intricate and compelling. Too complex to summarize in under 2 minutes. And that my friend is what made me a Marvel fanboy in the first place. So with that I'll end today's video, see you lads in the next one.